essentially hexproof and flight. Yeah, dead president, not a problem. And the sweet thing is, because it's an expensive drop, we don't want to draw this early in the game. We can pay two and put it back into the deck and draw a new card. So basically cycle it out of our hand. And then the next time we draw it, it costs less resources to play, which is super sweet. So you can basically just keep cycling it out of your hand until it costs one or no mana. I'm going to use my champion's ability to put some more cards back into my deck. And basically, you just want to, with this Winter Moon character, you just want to... Click too fast. You can click too fast in this game, too. I clicked past my attack step there. Whoops. Um, giant Corpse Fly. I'm going to have to discard. That's fine. So I'm going to discard Buccaneer, which is basically Man of War. When he comes into play, he unsummons something. Yeah, I just started playing last week, and I've been liking it a lot. Uh, there is Draft. There's Draft and Constructor. So we're going to put him back in and draw a card. We drew Counter Magic, which is kind of Cancel. Um, only it increases this card's sweet. So in addition to countering the spell, it makes all cards with the same name as that spell cost more resources. We'll draw. Um, Chlorophylia is basically rampant growth that comes into play untapped. It just grabs a resource out of my deck. And then let's play a Sapper's Charge. I'm going to go ahead and ship for two here because his guy has flying, so I can't block anyways. So if he wants to block, I'm fine with that trade. He has a time ripple of his own. All right. Yeah, this is... I'm actually playing against a computer right now. The constructed cues have been kind of slow. People are waiting for the fourth set's coming out at the beginning of next month, it's supposed to be, so... End step, I'm gonna use my Sapper's Charge to kill this Corpse Fly. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of the mechanics that it allows that you just aren't feasible in a, in a paper paper TCG, like, they're, they're interesting and, like, really neat design space. Drew a bunch of cards. Cycle some cards back into my deck. So this is that same one. I've already cycled it in once. So this already says draw a card extra on it. And now it's going to draw two extra cards next time I draw it. Uh, we do have a maximum hand size. So I'm going to have to discard, which is fine. We've got a bunch of peaks here. I'm just going to bend one of those. Inquisition. Um, yeah, I'm okay with letting that resolve. This is basically a discard spell for him, but I've got two pieces of counter magic. We'll peek here at end step. I'm going to grab Windsinger here. This is kind of my other control finisher. So I have two of the customizable guy, and this guy's so busted. So he, uh, whenever your opponent draws a card, you also draw a card, and then uh, your resources replenish on your opponent's turn. So basically, you just, you're never tapped out. And now I'm going to grab a shard with this guy, so that way we can play Windsinger plus have Counterspell up on our turn. Uh, there is a champ. There's a number of cards that utilize the graveyard, like reanimator style strategies. One of the champions actually has an ability that I believe it's pay seven, and you can, yeah. So he has a kill spell. We're gonna counter that. If he has another kill, he could have used it in response there, but he doesn't. So if we get to, if we get to untap, sweet. So he untapped our energy replenished, and when he draws a card, we get to draw a card. I'm actually writing a short guide for. It's just going to be an intro to an intro to hex, like geared towards magic players, people that are familiar with magic. So, uh, hopefully, that'll get published by the end of the week. Yeah, it's Prophet of Crufix plus Consecrated Sphinx in the same card, just like a control player's wet dream. So I'm going to put these peaks back into my deck. Play this Arcane Focus. 
two resources, that's fine. One of the reasons I really like this deck, I built this deck because it was cheap. Uh, the constructed decks on here range from, it seems like, 40 USD to about 300 USD for the most expensive one. This one was on the lower end because I wasn't sure if I was going to like the game, so I just bought one of the cheaper ones. But I've actually really liked this deck. I bought it because it was cheap, but I've been having fun playing it. It just, like, plays a bunch of cantrips, so, like, it just consistently does the same thing over and over again. Yeah, this deck was, like, $40. And this is a deck that won one of their qualifying tournaments for their $100,000 championship tournament, so it's very competitive. I've had a pretty consistent win rate against both the computer and uh, other people in the, uh, in the tournament rooms. Put arcane folks. They have counter magic in here. Yeah, I put counter magic back in my deck. And now my busted card that draws me cards is also a four six, so he closes pretty quickly. Draw a card when he draws a card. Put an action. Okay. When you play an action, this gets rage one. Interesting. So I'm gonna return. I'm gonna return this to his hand in response to its bonuses. So another thing that's that's different about this compared to other things is that it um. The bonuses in this game are permanent is a big change that I had to get used to. So, like, something that gives something like plus three, plus three is really good because it get, keeps that plus three, plus three forever. Yeah, I actually bought my deck uh, using the Five Shards website. I just, like, loaded everything up into a cart and hit purchase. So I'm going to counter magic one of these at least. I was hoping to find a second counter magic with those peaks so I could counter both of them, but... One of these is going to resolve. He's going to draw two cards off the top of my deck. He replayed his Salt Harpy. Sure. I know this is the same Salt Harpy he played before because there's a four in the upper left-hand corner, which means his cost was increased by my time ripple. And I'm just going to ripple this again. So we're kind of running out of gas a little bit here, but we just like hit one spell that draws cards. Yeah, there are some things that say until end of turn, but for the most part, everything's permanent. Like... In, in Magic, like, everything's it's just, like, almost a given that it's till end of turn. Because, like, it's really... In fact, there's only one, I think, one card in the history of Magic that, like, it's an instant or sorcery, like, an action equivalent that, like, gives a bonus that's permanent. And so we drew another Counterspell here, so we've got two Counterspells up. Opponent's at nine. So this cantrip finds this card, which draws four cards, and we get to copy when it comes into play. So this is going to draw eight cards. It's going to gas all the way up here. We're going to have to discard some, but that's fine. Play shard. Actually, I'm just going to play out like the Crocosaur. Ship for four here, and then he's dead on board. I guess we only have to discard one, one card, actually. It's not bad. I'm just a simple boy who wants to draw all of the cards. That's all I want. Shuffle some cards back into my deck. Uh, discard my second wind singer because I don't really need that. I would like to draw a card when he draws. Combat. Attack for nine.
I I hated Hearthstone. I played it for like three or four hours to like really try and give it a chance. Actually, that's not true. I put more time into it than that. It was almost it was a couple of days even. I just so like this area I'm playing in right now is one of the ways you can grind the in game. So I'm playing against the computer right now, and you earn gold, and you can turn gold into platinum or booster packs. Uh, the game, when you disconnect, you have up to five minutes to reconnect to the client and rejoin the game that you are playing. Uh, this hand is great, but we don't have any blue resources, so we need to mulligan. Keep. Yeah, and I'm actually running the Windows client on Linux through Wine, so... So this is... Wow, that's really good. So this is Rage 2, so it starts as a 0, but every time it attacks, it gains 2 power, so it snowballs really quickly. Green resource was a great draw here, because if I run off a second wild shard next turn, I can play the Canarasaurus and fight his guy before it gets too out of control. Uh, that is a bug that I assume is related to the fact that I'm running the Windows client through Linux. I've watched other people stream, and they're, they're, uh, they're running on supported operating systems that they have. They have spaces. Green resource? Okay, sweet. And he even played out another zero one. one So now I get to play the Canarasaurus and just eat his zero one one for free because they fight each other. And then I can trade this 2-2 two -two with his 2-1 in combat and get a really solid 2-for-1 here. Yeah, I, I heard people complaining about the payouts for the Qs and Hex, and, like, the payouts for the Qs and Hex are so much better than the payout for the Qs and Magic Online. I was like, you people think this is bad. Like, the, the rake is impossible. Like, the rake is much worse in Moto than it is on here. All troops in this particular fight get Rage 1. Oh, all troops in all zones. Oh, that's interesting. My guys have Rage 2. Got it. So normally that's just Rage 1. Okay, so I'm going to trade this with his 4-1, and then we're going to take 2 from this 1. His his hero power is he gets to revive something till end of turn, and then it sacrifices at the end step. So this is going to put target troop from crypt into your hand. Sure, raise dead, basically. Uh, I don't have... Uh, I don't have deck my deck list for... Um, Hex posted anywhere. This is pretty close to one of the qualifying deck lists that won. Uh, hexmeta.com. You can find a lot of different deck lists on there. I'm going to time ripple this and bounce it to his hand now so that way I can activate Winter Moon's ability and put my time ripple and my Canarasaurus back into my deck. Because the sooner. Can you imagine live your life without a head? It's a problem. So as the fight goes, you might not have to imagine it. So he keeps returning this guy from his discard pile, so now it's going to get Rage again and attack for 4, so I go to 15. Deals double damage. That's pretty good. So that's going to hit me for 8 next turn. Mm, we might die. We need something to... He did not a resource there. Alright, so we're dead in 2 to this guy. Uh, not all cards are free, but um, you can you can earn the card. So we're gonna lose this encounter. I guess I could draw. If I draw a green resource next turn, I could play the Crocosaur and fight his two guys. Green resource, untapped green resource. Hey, so you're saying there's a chance. So when Kronkosaur comes into play, he's like a super giant fight guy. He gets to fight two opposing creatures, so they each deal their power to him, and he deals his power to them. So that clears the board. Shuffle these two cards back into the deck. I'm on empty and at three life, so we'll see if he can just kill me. If he doesn't have a follow-up, though, or a draw, well, we could, we could be... Well, that's the guy that attacks for two. And that kills it. 